Hey guys, um, the second experiment that we're going to do today is going to be all about uh, concentration. So whereas strength was a property that each acid had, so you can't change the strength of an acid, uh, concentration is something that we can change. If you add more water to something, then it becomes less concentrated because you're diluting the amount that's in there. This is really easy to show you with something like, that you've come across all the time, like squash. I've set this up so you can see what happens with, when we dilute something. So I've got this compound here called potassium permanganate, KMNO4. It's a bright purple substance. You can't really see that here because it's very, very dark as a solid. But when I dissolve it, into this little amount of water, you should see a very bright purple color appear. So I'm going to take just a few crystals of this potassium permanganate and put them into the solution here. You can see it's starting to make a nice purple color and I'm just going to mix that in so it makes this really, really, really nice dark purple. This is what we call a concentrated solution. It's very, very dark, as you can see here. If I take this concentrated solution and pour it into more water, you can see that the color uh, is a little bit lighter. And that's because it is diluted. There's the same number of particles of potassium permanganate in here as there are in here, but in here, there's more water. And so therefore, the concentration is lower. If I take this and pour it into even more water, you can see that the color becomes less purple. If I take this and pour it even into even more water, then the color becomes less again. And if I take that and pour it into even more water, then yet again, we get a much lighter color. So the color got lighter, even though I had the same number of particles, because it was dissolved in an increasing amount of water. I hope that explains what concentration is. So what I've done is I've made up four different solutions of hydrochloric acid. They range in different concentration, and the unit that we use for concentration is known as the molar. So um, I have four solutions of hydrochloric acid, ranging from half a molar, 0 0.5 molar, going up in 0.5 molars up to two molar. So we have 0 0.5 molar, one molar, 1.5 molar, and two molar solutions of hydrochloric acid. And we'll look at how that affects the speed at which magnesium reacts with the acid. We're going to do it exactly the same way we did last time, with the same volumes of hydrochloric acid in each one, just changing the concentration from 0 0.5 to 1 to 1.5 to 2. And we're going to take a small piece of magnesium and we're going to place these in each of these different test tubes. Uh, let's have a, a look at how that works with the two molar first. Okay, here's my two molar solution. Uh, let, I've got my timer ready to go. So let's put this in. Ooh, there we go. So you can see it's reacting incredibly fast and there's actually loads of smoke coming out of the top here. That's the steam because the reaction is so quick. Lots of really, really vigorous bubbling going on. And I think it's over. So that only took 25.28 seconds. The 1.5 is bubbling less vigorously, but still a lot more than the one molar was and this one took 44 seconds. Even less vigorous bubbling from the one molar. The one molar again took 
uh, 82 seconds. And the 0 0.5 is bubbling very slowly. Lastly, the 0 0.5 molar took two minutes and 50 seconds. So this is the results that I got. For the last experiment, I wanted you to do a bar chart, but this time, can you draw me a line graph? Feel free to use something like Microsoft Excel to draw that. 